Argentina's new president, Javier Mille, campaigned on promises to cut ties with China. But now that he's in office, will he keep his promise? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Remember Bilbo Baggins? Well, imagine him with longer sideburns and as a soccer player who sings in a rock band, has several degrees in economics, is a famous TV personality, and goes on to become a member of Congress and eventually the president. That pretty much sums up Argentina's new president, Javier Mille. He took office almost a month ago after beating Argentina's former economy minister in a landslide election last year. That's not an understatement to say he's shaking things up in Argentina. Mille calls himself an anarcho-capitalist, which means he believes in limited government and a free market economy. While campaigning, he would bring chainsaws to his rallies as a symbol of how much government bureaucracy, spending, and regulations he would cut if he were elected. He promised to get rid of Argentina's central bank, replace the peso with the dollar, and radically deregulate the economy. But arguably, his most radical campaign promise was to cut ties with China, which he called an assassin because it murdered its own people. You've said that uh, as president of Argentina, you will not do business with China. No solo no voy a hacer negocios con China. No voy a hacer negocios con ningún comunista. And that includes Brazil, Argentina's largest trading partner, whose current president, Luiz Lula da Silva, is a socialist. Cutting ties with China shouldn't be that radical of an idea. After all, it is committing genocide against its own people. But it is radical for Argentina, and the reason is because of how dependent Argentina is on China for money. China is Argentina's second largest trading partner. In some industries, Argentina exports almost exclusively to China. For example, China buys over 75% of Argentina's beef exports, and over 90% of its soybeans. Almost all of Argentina's sorghum and barley go to China as well. Chinese financing has built Argentine solar plants, fertilizer factories, and train lines, among other things. Chinese companies have also heavily invested in Argentina's lithium reserves, which are the third largest in the world. Because Argentina has defaulted on so much of its debt, it now also relies heavily on China for credit as well. Back in 2009, China agreed to a credit swap with Argentina, which became an important source of capital for the struggling nation. The swap is an arrangement in which the two countries make a certain amount of their own currencies available to the other party, and has, in effect, worked as a non-automatic line of credit made by Chinese authorities to the Argentine government. Back in October, China agreed to let Argentina borrow $6.5 billion through the agreement. Argentina had defaulted on so much of its international debt previously that Argentina used some of that money to pay off its International Monetary Fund loan, which it otherwise would have likely defaulted on. That's because decades of socialist policies have destroyed Argentina's private sector and created a welfare state. 40% of the population now lives below the poverty line. And Argentina's inflation rate reached over 160% in 2023 meaning people pay for basic things like groceries in 100 peso bills. The usual ways that governments raise money to finance their debt just aren't enough, which is why countries like Argentina turn to China. China will loan almost anyone money, but Beijing usually asks for some political favors in return. And it often has geostrategic motives as well, which is how it got Sri Lanka to cough up its Hanban Tota port in 2017. Sri Lanka couldn't pay off its debt, so China got control of the port, which could be used as a military base, plus an extra 15,000 acres to boot for 99 years. Now, many analysts thought that once Mille came to power, he would take a more moderate stance on China because of Argentina's reliance on it. And if you believe the news, that seems to be exactly what he's doing. But it's not as cut and dried as the media makes it out to be, either. I'll unpack all of that right after this quick commercial break. Welcome back. Argentina's new president, Javier Mille, campaigned on promises to cut ties with China. But if you just read the headlines, you might think that once Javier Mille was elected, he totally changed his tune. Bloomberg says he's now taking a softer tone, showing how much Argentina needs China. Reuters interpreted a thank you he wrote on X to Xi Jinping as him, again, softening his tone. And the South China Morning Post claims his pick of a veteran diplomat was about him trying to mend ties with China. There are also some headlines about him that are just plain weird. 
Reportedly, Millet takes advice from his cloned dogs. He has five of them. Millet's biographer told website 20 Minutos, Millet is convinced that the dogs advise him in different areas, one in politics, another in economics, another gives him general advice. But is any of that true, or is it just a media narrative meant to attack him? Well, if you actually look at what he's done on China, it's not so simple. On the campaign trail, Millet's soon-to-be foreign minister said Argentina would no longer be joining BRICS. BRICS is a group of large developing countries created as an alternative to Western-led institutions like the IMF and World Bank. It was founded by Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Xi Jinping had personally invited Argentina and four other countries to join the trade bloc starting January 1st. But after Mili came to power, he made good on his promise to keep Argentina out of BRICS. Here's where analysts believe he caved to China, though. In his letter rejecting the invitation, he framed it as Argentina just not being ready to join BRICS at this time, which sure makes it sound like he's open to joining in the future. Now, whether that was just him trying to sound polite or he really would join at some point, we don't know. But he also said in the letter that he wanted to intensify bilateral ties and increase trade and investment flows with member countries. Now, Mille did promise to cut all ties with communist countries. But here's what he also said. Nosotros desde el Estado no vamos a promover ningún tipo de acción con comunistas, ni socialistas. Eso no quiere decir que los argentinos no puedan comercializar. Si quieren comercializar con China, con Rusia, con, con Brasil, con quien sea, problema de los argentinos. Now that may seem like splitting hairs. To say that the state won't do business with communists, but that the people are free to, sounds like he's trying to find an escape hatch. But there is a difference between a country sanctioning something and just letting the private sector do it. For example, Argentina's federal government joined China's Belt and Road Initiative in 2022. That was a federally approved program that allowed Chinese companies to come into Argentina and build some of its most critical infrastructure. Perhaps Millie will take a cue from Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni and exit the Belt and Road Initiative. Millet may not be able to control what his citizens do, but he can control choices made by the federal government directly to some extent. I'll come back to that. Now, on the other hand, during the campaign, Millet's now Foreign Minister Diana Modino said Argentina wouldn't cut ties with China. Instead, she said the government would just review secret state-to-state -state deals to ensure they were all above board. She also said that Argentina wanted to export as much as possible to everyone because Argentina has a lot of debt to pay off and they need a trade surplus to do that. Now, I don't know about you, but lowering a trade deficit sounds a little different than not doing trade with communist countries at all. It is possible, though, that she and Millet are just on different pages. Another reason analysts accuse Millet of becoming soft on China is that he reportedly asked Beijing to unfreeze money from the currency swap agreement. Remember that $6.5 billion China promised to Argentina last fall? Well, after Millet came to power, Beijing reportedly suspended the money. According to Argentinian media, that was until Millet demonstrates a clear intention to engage with Beijing. China hasn't confirmed it froze the money, but it hasn't denied it either, which probably means it did. And since Argentina's been using that money to pay off its IMF loans, I'm sure Beijing thought this would be the perfect blink test. Millet had the first laugh, though, because he was able to make an IMF payment last week without needing that money. He reportedly used a loan from CAF, the Development Bank of Latin America and the Caribbean. Whether he'll be able to get more loans from it in the future, though, remains to be seen, and that could determine who gets the last laugh. Millet also reportedly got Beijing's blessing for his pick for ambassador to China. He chose career diplomat Marcelo Suarez Salvia, who previously served as ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago. Now, this also comes after Millet promised to get rid of what he called the political caste, the group of elites who have run Argentina's economy into the ground. But for this position, Millet needs someone with diplomatic experience, especially experience dealing with China, if he's really going to change their dynamic. What remains to be seen now is how clear-eyed Salvia is on China. There are plenty of diplomats, <coughs> John Kerry, <coughs> who should be clear about China by now, but still aren't. But there has been some good news. According to the Argentine website Infobay, Argentina is reportedly purchasing some used American F-16 fighter jets from Denmark. Before Millet's election, Argentina had been in talks to buy new Chinese JF-17 Thunder jets, which the U.S. has warned South American countries against doing for security reasons. 
So it seems as if Milei is doing what he can do to reduce his country's engagement with China, given his current powers. One thing standing in his way is that he doesn't have control over Congress or the courts. His Liberty Advances Party is in the minority in Congress, which means getting any legislation through is going to be tough. And already, a court has suspended Milei's labor reforms, which could be another obstacle to getting his China agenda across the finish line. He also doesn't have full control over Argentina's provinces, either. Argentina's federal structure means its provinces can engage with China independently from the national government. That's especially scary because China has been working on building a naval base in Argentina as a gateway to Antarctica. Reports in the French news site Intelligence Online suggest that Argentina-based Chinese Communist Party official Xue Ping Tu has already finalized the entire matter with the provincial governor. So Mili's got his work cut out for him. He was elected to fix Argentina's disastrous economy. And if he makes a wrong move with China, it could make things much, much worse. But if he caves to China, Argentina risks becoming China's vassal state, at least more than it already is. He might be playing China's game for now while he has to, but if Argentina gets its economy back on track, Miele might actually make good on his campaign promises. Now, I got a video I'd like to show you, but first, China Censored wouldn't exist without fans like you who support us on Patreon. For as little as a dollar per episode, you can get all the cool perks that come with membership and join what I call the China Censored 50 Cent Army, the fans who keep the lights on and the show going. And today's question comes from Logan. Will BRICS have an impact on the Quad or world trade? Great question, Logan. I think the CCP would sure like BRICS to compete with the Quad or the World Trade Organization. First, for clarification, the Quad, an informal alliance between the US, India, Japan, and Australia, is really more of a security alliance dealing with intelligence sharing and military training than an economic framework between the four countries. So BRICS is really not an equivalent. The World Trade Organization, as the name suggests, is about the world. It has many member nations. BRICS is mainly Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, with a few other countries playing smaller roles. So it might be more accurate to ask if BRICS, as an economic and investment vehicle, is comparable to something like the IMF or the World Bank. And I don't think it is. Mainly, there's no way India and China will really cooperate. They have too many competing interests. And as the rest of the world grows increasingly suspicious of the CCP, I don't imagine they'll be able to wrangle other countries into Win-win mutual cooperation, as Xi Jinping likes to say. Thanks for your question and your longtime support, Logan. And in my ongoing attempt to talk about things YouTube considers too sensitive by hiding it in video game content, this week I'm talking about envy and what it has to do with communism by using the dreaded blue shell of Mario Kart as an analogy. Click on the video. And don't forget to click on that orange button to support China Censored on Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.